lodge. It was a four-star lodge. Um, do you upgrade it to five-star? Do we run it as a three-star lodge? Anyway, we ran it for six months and we asked people like yourselves, all the tour operators, etc., to come around and give us some of their opinions. And we decided to actually knock down the lodge, rebuild it. And in 2006, we, became, we got a five-star rating. And at the same time, we had built the Savannah Suite. So Savannah then started with four luxury suites, three executive suites, and the Savannah Suite. And um, we've carried on since there. So just to give you some idea of the concepts we've tried to incorporate into Savannah to make it feel a, a little bit different from the other lodges. I think the first thing was um, the safari experience. This we didn't actually have to introduce to Savannah. They had this. We believe people come to Africa to see animals, to go on safari. They don't come to a hotel in the bush. So everything at Savannah uh, evolves around the game drive. The game drive comes first. So if we send out three vehicles, uh, every day, the rangers decide when they come back for breakfast. The kitchen doesn't say you've got to be back for breakfast at 10. And if we have to say, uh, serve breakfast three times every morning, and we usually do, we do that. Um, I think, you know, your five-star rating tells you about your hotel side of things. And, you know, you know if you've got a five-star rating, you should have a good room, you should have good service, you should have good uh, staff, you should have good amenities, you should have a gym, you should have a whatever. Um, but what it doesn't tell you is about the game side of the experience. And we've been to lodges, beautiful lodges, where you don't sell any animals. And we often ask by people, how do you decide if it's a lodge is good? What would you do? Um, and we say there are three things you have to look at. Number one, you have to look at the game reserve it's in. Number two, you have to look at the vehicles. And number three, you look, have to look at the guiding staff. And it's a pity somebody hasn't introduced a way to rate those things. And if we look at Savannah, I mean, in the Sabi Sand is a really a great game reserve. If you want to show your clients the big five in four days and they see them well up close and intimately, you come to the safari, uh, come to the Sabi Sands. Um, what so Sabi Sands is not anymore is the wilderness experience. You need to understand that. Anywhere in the Sabi Sands at an elevated position, you're going to see lights. But it is the most amazing wildlife experience that you can see. And I would say anywhere in Africa. If you see a buffalo kill in the Sabi Sand, it's as wild as anywhere. Okay, so the next thing after the safari we looked at was our staff. So we believe your staff can be a huge asset for you. And we've got a, um, a theory is happy staff, happy guest. Um, and it applies to any one of your staff. If you've got a, somebody working in the garden, smiling and saying good morning to you, it's a huge thing. So the second thing about your staff, you need them to be there a long time. And particularly if you have repeat guests, people like to come back to the lodge and know the manager. They like to know the ranger. They like, if they had a good time with that ranger, they like to ask for him to drive them again. So what we had to do was find a way to make our staff happy and to make them stay with us. And we did it in two ways. The easy way was to pay them a little bit more and give them a medical aid and a pension fund, et cetera, et cetera. But also the other way we did it, and you have to go behind our lodge to see, we made, we wanted to make them feel that Savannah was their actual home. And they wanted to come back to Savannah and wanted to be there. And the way we did that was giving them decent accommodation. 
So if you go uh, to the back of our camp, you'll see our managers and our heads of departments have got either a house uh, um, or a small cottage and they all air conditioned and they all have small gardens. So people can make it their home. Our rangers and trackers all have um, large rooms with bathrooms on suite, air conditioned, and our butlers have the same thing. The rest of our staff, and we don't have a lot of people staying overnight at Savannah, have got um, two rooms that share one bathroom. So everybody has got really good accommodation at Savannah, and I think it's paid off for us. The third thing that we wanted to do um, when we started was to do a little bit for conservation. I think most people who own lodges want to do that. And uh, in the Sabi sense, it's a little bit difficult because the animal conservation is not done by the landowners. It's done by the warden and an executive committee. So you really don't have anything to do with animal management, but you do manage your own land. You have to go after your own roads, you have to look after your own water holes, you have to look after your own um, uh, felt. So you now have to burn, when you have to burn, you have to mow, you have to do bush carrying, and that we do under the, with the help of an ecologist. And then the fourth thing was work in the community. And long before this became fashionable, and it became fashionable to um, take your guest to show them what you were doing for the committee, we started working in the committee. Initially, Natasha, who was our assistant manager then, went into the, committee, uh, into the community. This was about 10 years ago, and she started to do work there, and it became so much that we hired somebody specially uh, to work within the community. And Karen will give you a whole lot of details of our projects. But these days, there's hardly a guest who doesn't ask you, what do you do for the community? And can you show us something? And we're lucky to be able to take them to a whole lot of projects between game drives and show us what, and show them uh, what we do. And then um, finally, what we wanted, we wanted to offer good value for money. We decided we wanted to be the lowest cost five-star lodge in the Sambi sand, but yet give a full, um, full um, um, experience, a five-star experience. So if you look at our, our rooms, for example, even our, our, lower, our entry level suite has got a heated pool, a wooden deck, covered patio, a bathroom, a bedroom, a bathroom on suite, and an outside shower. So I think we have achieved that, but I think Corrid will go into that as well. Um, actually, that's all I've got to say by way of introduction. Corrin, it's over to you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, hello, everybody. I see there's 92 people now online, so thank you for joining us. And if by any chance Serena Pele is online, happy birthday to you. And welcome to October, everybody. All right, so moving on from there, we're just going to start off with um, an overview of whereabouts we are actually in the Sabi sand. But now my map is not moving on to the next screen. Andy, I'm not sure if you can you help me. You need to me. press the forward arrow. Have you I clicked have, on your I screen? Have. have you clicked on your screen again? There we go. You're on it. There's a delay. Don't click okay. a number of times, otherwise it's going to move through three or four slides. You need to go back. There we go. Okay. Got it. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right. So just a quick overview. Um, I'm sure you've all seen this map, but it's a nice reminder um, of just where we're located. So Savannah are in the western sector of the Sabi Sands. We traverse on this block here. There are no fences, but this block just gives you an idea of the, the size of our traversing area, which is just over 9,000 hectares. Um, so just to give you an understanding, Sangeeta are right next door to us. So basically our land and their land is just divided by a dirt road that just runs straight up sort of in the northern northerly direction. Um, getting to Savannah, there are a number of different ways. Um, obviously, post-COVID, I'm not 100% sure if things are going to change, but before all of this happened, 
um, our guests could drive in through Newington Gate, um, either by themselves or road transfer. The roads now are actually really, really good. They've tarred most of the way from, from the main road um, into the Sabi Sand. There's maybe only about three or four kilometers of dirt road left. Um, so Newington Gate is our closest point of entry, and then Olusaba's airstrip is where Federal Air and um, Airlink used to fly in, both sort of twice daily. Airlink were doing lodge hops from Skakuza and um, Kruger and Pumalanga into the airstrip, and then we would collect them with open uh, vehicles and then transfer them down. So that transfer is included in, in, our, um, in our rates. But if your guests fly into Skakuza or Krugan Pomalanga, we have a third party road transfer company who we get to do the transfers, which we can book on your behalf because we negotiate special rates with them. Um, or you're obviously welcome to do that yourself. So that's just in terms of getting to Savannah. I'm just going to hand over to Jared quickly so he can give you a little bit more info about the traversing and the rules and about the land that we're in. Hello everybody, thanks Karen. Um, yeah, so the traversing rules work slightly different in the West to pretty much the majority of the rest of the Sabi Sands. We firstly, we limit number of vehicles and sightings to, it's, it depends on the terrain, but it's usually two vehicles. If it's a nice open area or if it's wild dogs hunting, depending on what's happening, what's happening in the sighting, we can go to three vehicles, but it's, it's usually only two uh, for most sightings. So guests aren't gonna get bombarded with other vehicles. The only difference is you are going to see different branded vehicles. So you'll sit in a sighting with a vehicle from Delini, for example, versus if you're down at, if you're saying at, say, Singita, you're only going to see Singita vehicles. Um, the one thing I like to point out on this map, and this probably comes from my guiding days, is that blue line which runs through the map, that's the Sand River. And the Western sector as, a, as an entity, as a whole unit, is one of, of one of four entities in the whole Sabi Sand that can drive north and south of the river. And that's what brings in a huge amount of biodiversity. And in fact, the biodiversity of what we can see in our traversing area is, represent, is perfect representation of the whole Sabi Sand. So it really lends itself extremely well. And that simply comes from being able to drive north and south. And you'll see some pictures later around the lodge and how open and grasslands it is around Savannah, which <laughs> hence its name. Versus as you get up towards the river, it kind of just gets thicker and thicker as you get further north until you're almost in the perfect riverine forests around the river sections. And then as you get further north again, it starts opening up a little bit. So it brings in a huge, a huge range of insects, trees, plants, birds, which therefore bring in different mammals, which therefore bring in different the predators. If, so things around Savannah that you typically see being slightly more grasslands, things like herds of buffalo, rhinos, and because of things like buffaloes down there often lions are around the area so it's it, and then as you go up to the rivers typically you get more of your leopard species up there and your your big cats like the slightly thicker easier hunting areas as well as down savannah more open grass plains things like cheetah are, are probably it's not something we see very often but if you do see them they're usually on savannah's property often around the lodge and um, and yeah i think that's from my side okay the only other thing i'd like to mention is, is with with the rules that apply in the western sector uh, the, another rule that we have is that for the first hour of your game drive, the vehicles need to actually stay on their own properties. So uh, what that means is that the rangers are looking around for animals on, on the, the lodge's own property. They talk to each other and then as you move out from your property after the first hour, you've got a sense from the other rangers because of the communication between all of the lodges in the western sector, of where the animals are actually located. So it's a really nice, we have a really good working relationship with the other lodges in the Western sector. And because we have um, an arrangement with Delini, with Delini, we can basically, Savannah is allowed to traverse onto their property, which kind of links through here and then up to the north to the Leadwood and River Lodge area. So we actually can start heading, our vehicles are allowed to start heading north a little bit earlier if we want to so it just gives us a little bit of a an extra gain when it comes to um traversing but this is just extra information for you guys to know so i think that's it hey jared anything else okay cool all right so moving on to um what we've been doing during lockdown uh, since it was a hell of a lot longer than we were all expecting 
And as Mark mentioned, one of the things that is critically important to us and not just for show is the community project. So we hire staff from the local communities, which means that most of their families all live out there um, or relatives at some point of rela um, relation. So these are the projects that were obviously quite, well, these people are mainly the ones that were worst hit during um, lockdown. So the old age home that we look after, that had to, um, all of these projects had to continue with no guest funding. Um, so we had to work a lot harder with NGOs um, and with you know, donations and that sort of thing. The home care centre for children, um, the actual caregivers that were supporting these projects, um, the livestock, so it's a newish project that we started. Um, taking care of our own staff and families, taking care of the lodge. Um, this is a, a unique time for us where we had nobody in camp and we were able to do things that we, we've never really been able to do before. So the gardens are looking absolutely amazing at the moment, just as an example. Um, taking care of the reserve and being present in the bush to assist with the fight against rhino anti-poaching. Um, so along with that, because the rangers are still going out twice a day uh, to remain present in the bush, we started doing the recording the stay home safari videos. Um, and we've surpassed 100 episodes now and they've been really, really well received by our guests. Um, at the bottom of the screen, that was the April Fool's one where Greg was pretending to be a leopard dressed in his pajamas. So they had a little bit of fun while they were out there as well. Okay, so just moving on to the, the project. Um, this is the home care center. So before lockdown um, happened, we were, we were probably seeing around 300 children coming into the center every day. This is not a place that they actually sleep. It's where they come to after school to get care um, from, there's about 13 house mothers and then there's two ladies that oversee the whole project. And the kids are then split up between the 13 house mothers. Um, so when they get to the center, they've got a safe place for the afternoon. Uh, they get a meal, they get fortified, um, they get a fortified cereal to make sure that they've got all of the vitamins and minerals um, that a growing child needs for the day. They get help with um, any medical problems that they may have. And the house moms basically just make sure that they're okay. Uh, most of these kids, come from families where there's actually no adult in the house. Um, so they live in a home that's run by maybe an older sibling of sort of 18 or 20. Um, and on that note, Savannah is also um, the home care center. The ladies identify families where there's sort of, you know, a couple of, maybe a family that's a little bit more needy. And we've started raising money. We've just built our third home for one of these families. Um, which is a family of seven children who are living in a really bad um, state and Savannah has raised the money and we've just built the third home now. So these kids now have a safe place to live and decent accommodation. So we obviously with lockdown, the centre was closed um, and we made sure that the house mothers had food parcels to give to the kids. And the old age home, we, uh, this was another very important project for us. These old folk had no one looking after them. Um, and the center was built. There's a, a, there's a, a nurse, his name is Nico. He lives there and works there full time looking after the old folk. We, during lockdown, they actually still in lockdown. Um, the center also, the care center is only op actually opening on Monday, but because the old folk are at high risk, they've, everything's been closed down. So we've just made sure that all the donations, mm -hmm. um, their adult nappies, food parcels, medical um, stuff has all been met to make sure that they've been okay over this time as well. Um, then our wonderful staff on the left hand side, that's our housekeeping team, who've nicknamed themselves the Knitting Circle. So one of our guests taught them all how to knit and they've been knitting beanies during lockdown um, and the beanies were all handed out and issued to the gogos and the grandpas at the old age home to keep them warm over this winter. So it's just basically really nice to see that the, the staff actually are all very involved with our community projects as well. Um, I think that they 
they appreciate Savannah's support and they can see as well how much we do do for them and how much our guests do for the community too through their donations. Um, this is a new newish project that started. Um, it's just to assist the, the local community with their livestock. So I'm pretty sure you can all imagine that if there's people at home that are not eating properly, the animals are likely to be even worse off. So we've joined up with um, the state vet and with a local White River team as well, vet, veterinary clinic, who have donated a lot of their time. Um, they've been going out during lockdown. Thankfully, it's, they were listed as essential services. So we were still able to continue with the work that we do in the community. Um, it is mainly with the livestock, with the, the cattle and you know the goats and the sheep, with the dipping and making sure that um, they are medically cared for. So you can see that poor cow at the bottom there. I don't know she, she, what happened to her, but her legs in a, in a splint. And this is just the dipping um, field or the dipping area that you can see for the cows. So the, the livestock obviously are worth a huge amount to the community. So um, that's sort of the reason this project was started, just to help them. Um, and then also the domestic animals as well. So they do a lot of spaying of um, the dogs and the cats and that sort of thing. When there's puppy litters of puppies, they help um, donate food so that the mom has still got some food and then they rehome the puppies afterwards and spay the, the, the dogs. So that's just ways that we're helping um, in the community as well with the animals and the livestock. Okay, so moving on to our unique selling points. As Mike, Mike pretty much mentioned most of these, um, number one being our location. So that is, I mean, we, from a, an animal perspective, the way we all work in the Western sector, um, the, it all just marries up to, to being a really, really amazing game viewing experience. Um, Savannah Rangers, when there's animals, they will go and see them. They, um, you know, if they get called in and said that there's wild dogs in the area, guests will get there. They'll get to see them. Um, so we always make sure, as Mike said, the safari experience is the key um, aspect to the guest stay. We only have nine suites, but within those nine suites, um, we have essentially two different room types. We have the tented style accommodation in seven of the nine rooms, which makes us slightly different and unique in, in the offering of the accommodation. We also have the Savannah Suite, which is a villa type offering, um, and it's ideal for families traveling together. So we can take kids of any age at the Savannah Suite, which opens us up, makes it a little bit easier for, for family type flexibility. Um, our safari vehicles, we spend a fair amount on um, custom design to make them a little bit more comfortable and more luxurious. Uh, we spend a lot of time in these vehicles, up to three hours. So, you know, when you're sitting bumping around, you don't really want to be on a hard bench seat. Um, the personal service, attention to detail, and as Mike mentioned, staff are key. Um, we really do have a wonderful, wonderful team of staff. Um, this picture is, I think they all went out in a bumble, so you'll see a kid jumping there. Don't worry, we don't employ children, but uh, this is just the families. As Mike said, people make home for themselves and the families are very important to us to make sure that the guests stay to stay on. Um, all right, so moving on to the lodge side of things. This is just, it gives you a, a basic layout of what the, the lodge looks like from above. So. On the left hand side, you'll see the four luxury suites, which are the entry level rooms. As Mike mentioned earlier, we, Savannah has always wanted to stay affordable in the five star market. So if you had to have a look um, and compare rack rate with rack rate and complete offering, I think you will be pretty um, well surprised or you'll know that we are well priced in the five star market for what these rooms offer. So currently the rack rate on the luxury suite is 11,600 Rand per person per night sharing. Um, as Mike mentioned, heated pools, there's outdoor showers, double, you know, big double vanities, everything that you need from these rooms. Um, this is the main lodge area over here, moving into the center of the picture with a swimming pool that overlooks a big water hole. Then we have our executive suites further to the right. Suite number five is actually um, set up 
for disabled clients. There are, there's a rail in the shower and there's a rail in the toilet to assist. And it's the closest to the main lodge, um, just to make it a little bit easier for getting around. And then the furthest off to the right is the Savannah Suite. So that's where I'm going to start with the presentation. Um, number eight and number nine are the rooms. And then this is the central lounge area with the corridors that lead in between. So you'll get a sense of that now. All right, so starting with the Savannah Suite, these are the two rooms, as you can see. Um, unfortunately, this is an old image. Uh, the vegetation around the Savannah Suite now is actually so dense between the rooms, we can't get a proper picture anymore to show you the three separate rooms. <laughs> so this is as good as it gets, but it's an old one. Um, so each of the rooms is exactly the same. Uh, they've got heated, so all the rooms have got heated plunge pools, beautiful big decks. Leading into the bedrooms, we've uh, recently refurbished the, the whole Savannah suite. So it's, um, oh, the delay is really bad on my side. Oh, there we go. Um, this just gives you a sense of what the room looks like from the sliding doors looking in. So it's a really spacious room. We can put single beds in this room if there is a family, for instance, staying with smaller children. Um, this door goes through to the bathroom at the back and then there's a door just to the right over here that leads into the corridor which then leads into the central lounge area. So this is what the bathroom looks like standing at the glass open doors um, with this, the outdoor shower is basically behind us you can see the reflection in this mirror but really beautiful spacious bathrooms double vanities there's a double shower on the inside um, a, a very private uh, closed off toilet over here and then that door leads you through to, to the actual bedroom. We also renovated outdoor showers quite recently so they all, it's sort of like a little atrium out there, it's really really stunning. Um, my favourite for a morning shower after game drives. This is the central lounge area, so to the left that's the corridor that leads to the room I just showed you and then this one to the right, to the second bedroom. So when you book the Savannah Suite, um, you basically get about, it's about 450 square meters of space overall underneath the stack. So you get a private vehicle, your own ranger, tracker, butler, and chef. So all your meals can be accommodated for privately here. Um, if there's kids under the age of eight, we can accommodate them here because it's more flex, it offers more flexibility and privacy. Um, basically, if you know, with kids of any age of welcome. Otherwise, it does often get booked by grandparents traveling maybe with um, their kids or two couples traveling together. Um, so the meals can be accommodated for privately at the suite and we normally do it out on the patio. If um, the, the adults are wanting it to go across to the main camp, maybe to experience a Boma dinner or something like that, we do have childminders available to look after the kids. Um, so they, the adults can still go out and sort of have a night out, if we can put it like that. Uh, because we offer a private vehicle to the, to the guests staying in the Savannah Suite, as I said, kids of all age are welcome then, because um, we'll tailor make the, the safari around them. Lauren, before we go on to executives, Rogan, I see there's two in the Q&A. Yeah, yep. what is that? So the one's coming from Lilani. She was just wanting to know if you have quality pictures of the director's house for her to use, because uh, they're getting quite a few inquiries. So she was just looking for that. Okay, we do, we do, well, okay, when she says quality, um, they, we haven't had a, we haven't been able to get a professional photographer in to take photos of the director's house. It was not something that we ever sold before lockdown. So um, we, we managed to get one of our guides to go in and they have taken some pictures. It's, they, they're good enough for you to see what you know the layout is. Um, so I can send them through to you. Um, I can send you a link to our Dropbox if you want to just pop me a mail and then we can do that. So and just not to confuse everyone, the director's house, guys, is not the Savannah Suite that Karen has just gone through. The director's house is a house that was built recently to house the directors and it's not forming part of this major presentation today, but it is an offering that had been brought in during lockdown for the South African market. It's a beautifully luxurious house, but it's not to be confused with the Savannah Suite, which Karen has just gone through. Rogan, over to you. Great, then there's just one more from Irene Taylor. She's just wanting to know 
Um, because for the disabled suite, are the vehicles also equipped to take the disabled guest on a game drive? Okay, so this is something that we do. Um, we, we prefer to say that we can assist people who have disabilities. Um, so, as I said, there's only rails in the toilet and in the shower. Um, normally, the guests that come to us will have either an aid, somebody helping them, or they will be not completely. So anybody possibly who's paralyzed from the neck down will need to have somebody traveling with them to assist them in and out of the vehicles. We don't have any special lift. Um, so the person needs to understand that we would need to assist them in and out of the vehicle or their aid would need to do it for them. I hope that makes sense. Perfect. That's all the questions for now. I'll stop you okay. again if any more come through. Cool. No problem. All right. So moving on to the tented part of our accommodation. This is one of the three executive suites, again with the heated plunge pools large, beautiful decks and the little undercover patio area. Moving into the bedroom, you can see very spacious. So we can assist with um, triple requests in the executive suites. We are very lucky at Savannah in that we have ex an extra vehicle available. So um, requesting private vehicles at Savannah is normally something that we can do. It is always on a request basis. But um, so that, that, that's one thing to note that about the private vehicles is that we normally can assist. And secondly, because we have the extra space, we are able to accommodate um, the triple requests mostly as well because we've got the extra space for vehicles. Um, going through to the bathroom. Okay, so from this picture, you can see it's the same layout as the Savannah suite. So you walk through into the bedroom, then the bathroom is laid out at the back and then it opens out into the shower. The difference, main difference here being that the executive suites are set under canvas rooftops with the Bedouin style draping on the inside. So you can see the rest of the room is like a normal room. It combines the best of both. Um, you've got the security of normal doors and windows that open and close, sandstone tiles. Um, you can't hear what's going on next door. You've got noise privacy. But at night, if you're lying in, in the bed and it starts to rain, you can hear the raindrops on the canvas rooftop. Uh, you can hear the wind in the trees. So it just connects you slightly to nature. It's just, it adds an, an element of romance to the room, which, um, which is really lovely. Uh, moving on to the executive suites. So these were also recently redone and quite drastically so. We added on the deck, um, extended the patio area, put in the sliding doors. So there are four of these rooms. Um, the inside of the room, is still quite spacious, but we don't do triple rooms um, in the, the luxury suites. Just to add as well, we have put mosquito nets up in these rooms. Um, we just haven't had a professional photographer in to take pictures of that yet, but it's just sort of added an element of romance again with that, you know, the, mos the mosquito nets that people kind of expect when they come on safari. The bathrooms laid out at the back, just slightly smaller, but the same layout, still with double vanities and then the um, a shower on the inside as well as the outdoor shower. So one of the things about Savannah, um, we decided to put Wi-Fi in the rooms um, of the lodge and rather not in the main lodge area. Um, Savannah is a very, is, is much more of a sort of a social environment. We want people to, to feel like it's a home away from home. We want people to chat. The rangers are very social with um, the, the, the guests, the staff, and to act very, um, you know, very well with the guests as well. It's part of the whole experience. So we just decided that if guests want to do work, we understand the necessity of the Wi-Fi, but if they want to do anything or need the Wi-Fi, it is available in the rooms, but not um, in the main lodge area. So people don't sit there and, and focus on their phones or tablets or whatever. This is oh, the main um, lodge area. Yep. Um, another question is just coming through from Celeste. She's yeah. just asking, are the two bedrooms of the Savannah suite identical? Yes, they are identical. And just to note as well, I didn't mention, if we don't sell the Savannah suite as the suite with the, um, the doors open into the lounge area, we actually lock those doors to the corridor and we can sell them as an extra two executive suites. So they're priced the same, but instead of the tented rooftop, you're just getting the same room size, the layout, everything, but it's got the, the thatched roof. 
All right, so moving on to the, this is the main lodge area. So it's kind of where it all comes together. It's the heartbeat of the lodge. Downstairs is the living area. And then upstairs um, over here is a library and loft, which overlooks a beautiful waterhole, which you can kind of see through this view over here. Downstairs, you can see the living, the living area. So upstairs, there's board games, there's a computer terminal, there's a little library, so people can just sit up there and relax if they want to. Um, downstairs is there are two big fireplaces, so in winter it's nice and cozy. Um, people sit on the couches and read, get, you know, have a glass of wine. Um, very importantly, the wine cellar through here and the bar. Um, in summertime, it's a beautiful open space um, with no with no sides that um, just the air just flows through, and you can just walk out into the garden and sit by the pool. Our boma is just to the right over here. Um, but yeah, it's a lovely space for people to come together and just spend time talking to the staff and just relaxing. Um, the water hole that you can see, that is what it looks like. Um, and from what Jared was mentioning a little bit earlier about the, the different sort of terrain and the traversing area, this gives you a really lovely indication of what he, he meant by the open savanna. So you can see how it's a perfect area for the big herds of buffalo and the cheetah, obviously, when they're in the area. Meals at Savannah. So before lockdown, we, we did a little bit more communal dining at Savannah. Um, post lockdown for the immediate future, we're going to have to do more private dining. Um, obviously, all of the staff have had their training. We completely um, set up for all of the procedures and that need to be put in place. We can accommodate any dietary requirements. Um, the staff, this is obviously just part of the meal preparation. We've always felt that, you know, meal times are important times to come together. Everybody can, everybody communicates and understands food and the, the joy of it. Um, so we also love to set um, tables out in different areas and make use of the outdoor space of the lodge um, to make it part of the whole the whole experience. So this is just out in the garden overlooking the main lodge waterhole. Um, and I would safely say that if your guests are there for three or four nights, they're going to get a different dining experience every night. I think Savannah has about seven or eight different evening dining experiences um, that we put on. So that's the Boma, the choir will come and sing. Um, we do surprise train dinners. So this is not something we like to advertise because it really is a big surprise for guests. Um, this Salati carriage that you can see here, during the day, it's pushed into a shed, so nobody actually sees it. And when we do um, carriage dinners, basically the guests will all go out and drive. We pull, uh, we pull the carriage out and we set everything up with the, the lanterns and the candles. And the guests arrive back to the scene, um, which they're completely blown away by every single time. So. The rangers then just give them a little bit of a history of the, the old Salati line that used to run through the Sabi sand and used to connect South Africa with Mozambique. Um, and it's an original railway carriage that we've restored and then we actually have dinners on. And because it's sort of private tables, we can still continue with that now as well. Um, bush dinners, bush breakfasts, try and make things very special for people and obviously your private dinners as well. All right, so moving on to the safari side of things. Um, as Mike mentioned, we employ career guides. Uh, so what that means is that this is what these guys want to do. Um, they're not in the bush just for a year or two just to get some experience or to have a gap year. This is what they, they're passionate about. It's, it's, they want to spend the rest of their lives guiding. And that's, that's what makes the difference between, I think, you know, the, the guys that we employ and maybe some of the other, some of the other lodges. So this is our team of six guides um, from a, you know, there's always a rotation of, of them because everybody has to take a chance to go off on leave. Um, the guides also work with a tracker. So we have a seat on the front of the vehicle and it actually makes up a really lovely dynamic. Um, I think if, if most of you, most of you would have been on safari, you'll understand that there's always a really, um, nice dynamic between the tracker and the ranger and the guests. Our trackers as well are very interactive with our guests, so it's quite nice to have that. Two, two staff members with six people on a vehicle maximum, um, so that's quite a, good, it's quite a good ratio. 
the vehicles at Savannah, as I mentioned just now, we have we invest a lot in our vehicles. Um, this is a Land Rover. We've just changed to Land Cruisers, um, but the setup is exactly the same. Um, three three rows of seats with only two seats per row and a storage sort of unit in the in the middle between the two seats. Um, maximum six people on a vehicle. Oh, this thing's taking a long time to turn. Sorry. Well, um, let me catch you while it's turning there, Karen. Okay. Uh, somebody was just asking Jill, um, for Jill Allen's asking for the Salati train. Do we have interior pictures? Yes, we them? do. We do. I just didn't want to bore you with so many dining pictures, but I definitely, I have a few. So I'll send them to you as well. You can just pop me a mail. Okay, so this is what the vehicles look like from from the front, um, the two two seats per row. Those the the boxes in the middle we can actually take out and replace with another seat if necessary. So if you have a family, for instance, um, who want to stay on the same vehicle, we can put more people on the vehicle if that is needed. Inside those boxes we have ponchos, binoculars. Um, there's clear glasses so that you don't get bugs in your eyes at night, um, hand sanitizer and all of, all of those extra things. Um, our rangers, if anyone follows our blogs, you'll know that our guides are amazing photographers. So they are very happy to assist with anybody um, who comes out on safari who's not all that familiar with how to use the settings correctly for, for outdoor sort of safari shots. Um, the other thing that we can do too is um, we have a, a company that we can assist with guests hiring photographic equ equipment. Um, so if they don't want to arrive with all of their own gear or um, if they don't have any of their own gear but want to try their hand at photography while they're with us, we can assist them with that too. Yeah, just have some pictures of the safari experience. Our lions know karate. All right, and then we move on to walks. So we do offer walks at Savannah as well um, in the morning generally. Um, most, most people would sort of go out. They can speak to their ranger about what they prefer to do, but most people will head out on a drive and then the guide will stop and then the guests can do a little bit of a walk back to the vehicle or um, sometimes they'll go out and then they'll walk back to camp. We were also offering during um, winter months a walk between Savannah and Delini. It was called Walking Wild. Um, it was a really nice two night, two night package where guests could actually interlink instead of um, taking a transfer between Savannah and Delini, they could walk uh, bet between the two lodges about 13 kilometers through the bush. Um, unfortunately, it never really took off. Um, it is something that we could still look at offering if anyone is interested. Um, but yeah, the normal walking safaris we do in the morning and um, you're accompanied by obviously an armed ranger and a tracker. Africa safety. Uh, this is, I think, now more than ever, probably really nice to, to know about or remember. Um, they have assisted us a lot with our COVID policies and setup and um, just general information that we need. They are based at Sangeeta. It's a paramedic service, a medical response service that can be at our doorstep in about 10 minutes. Um, they can they handle everything from, you know, somebody who's having an anxiety attack to something even more serious. We have unfortunately once only had to airlift somebody out and they arranged that um, to an, an Elspreet hospital. So they're on hand if there's any emergencies and really nice to know if you've got clients who maybe have a pre-existing medical condition and they're a little bit nervous about traveling to, to South Africa and being in a remote area. So that's something that the lodge pays for to, to have use of. And then just some of the general areas around the lodge, we've got a beautiful curio shop um, a really amazing gym, um, probably one of the best gyms I've ever seen at a lodge. Um, and then we do massages, uh, facials. They, we, we don't have a spa center, but we have the, the, it'll get set up on the guest patio out in the garden. And then this is just the last slide. So I hope I've managed to, to cover everything and you guys are all still awake. 
But just a quick um, overview of what we're doing for 2021 for our rates and specials. We have sent the rates out. So if you guys haven't got your STO rates yet, please do let us know and we'll get them out to you. But what we decided to do for 2021 is hold the 2020 rate for the first five months. So for travel from January to the end of May, there is also an extra incentive in place for travel months, January, February, and March. We're offering an extra 15% off your STO accommodation rates in those three months of travel. So basically what it works out is it's a, it's a rate hold, less a 15% discount um, for, for those three months of travel. Then from 1 June to the 31st of December, we've increased the rates and I say an average of 5% increase. Um, for instance, the executive suites only went up by four point something percent. So I'm just working it out on average between the three different room types. Um, the specials that are set in for 2021, we've got a long stay deal, which is new for Savannah, a pay for and stay for five. We are hoping that this is gonna be useful when we are open up for travel again. We've heard that um, people will probably be staying at places for slightly longer. So we're trying to encourage that. Um, the long-standing honeymoon offer, which is a 50% off um, accommodation rate for the one partner. And then our repeat guest offer. As Mark mentioned earlier, we do have a lot of repeat guests and we feel that it's, you know, there's so many places in the world that they could go to instead of coming back to a lodge that they've already been to, that it's definitely warrants thanking them for that. So we've done that via a discount, which is bookable through the trade as well. And then obviously none of these offers are combinable. Jared, do you want to have a Perfect. quick chat about the essay rates? Yes, thank you. Um, so we have got essay rates at the moment. If anyone hasn't received them, please let us know. We can get them to you as well. Uh, we've got a few different offerings, um, which will come through on the rates. But basically, our FRT rates in our luxury suites are from three triple nine per person per night, and executive suites are from four triple nine per person per night. And that's it's basically it's the exact same offering, other than the alcoholic drinks is what we're basically including. That we want we want staffing guests to have the same experience as our overseas guests at a huge huge discount. It's probably, I can't remember the exact figure, but it's just shy of 70% discounts on our, on our normal rack rate. So if anyone would like those rates, please let us know. We can get them to you as well. Thank you for listening. I think there's just a video quickly. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll take that over again. So you guys give me a sec. There's a little bit of a delay here. I'm trying to get my Uh, don't know what's going on. Sorry. There we go. Right, I'm back in control. Okay.
Okay. Um, so for that, guys, that kind of brings us to the end of our webinar for today. And I uh, just want to thank you all for tuning in. Um, it was fantastic to, to hear from Mike, Karen, and Jared. So thank you all very much for, for your time this morning. Thanks to all of those who tuned in to this uh, presentation. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we'll catch you on the, in your offices, hopefully not in the not too distant future. Please uh, reach out to Karen and Jared if you're needing anything. I will be sending a, um, an email with the collateral and uh, a, a link to the recording of this, this webinar today. So thanks very much for, for your time. And uh, that's it from us. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers, everyone. Bye, everybody. Cheers.